Some members come to Parliament and they think they want to focus on uh, economic issues. Some members come to Parliament and they want to focus on social programs. Some members come to Parliament wanting to focus on, uh, on foreign policy issues. Mr. Green comes to Parliament and he thinks, how can I create a situation in which members of Parliament have to work less? He is going for committee... Can keep uh, feedback about the direction they want to see from this country in the next little while? And, you know, like, if, if there had been courtesy provided in other situations that would have included other parties in the decision-making and the direction, we wouldn't be here today. And we're in a minority government, despite whatever fantasy world Pierre Polyev or Andrew Scheer, whoever wants to live in, I'll tell you this, Mr. Chair, that still at 40 percent, 60 percent of the country doesn't doesn't approve of the direction that the Conservative Party wants to take the country in. This is a minority government. Every committee is in a minority situation. It requires support from the other two opposition parties when you want to go in a direction. It's not the call of the chair. That's why we put these frameworks in place. The 106, to me, is the democratic way to recall a committee. It is the way in which you can find a willing partner in any of the other parties to decide the direction. But I'll tell you what, if the Conservative caucus can't find another party to cooperate on the direction of a committee, then it doesn't have a mandate to go in that direction. Pure and simple. Just as it was experienced here, whether it's regular or not, I'm under no illusions that, that any of the common courtesies are going to be adhered to in any potential future fantasy land uh, of a conservative iteration of government. I'm not naive. I know what to expect. But I'm not, it does not, doesn't mean I'm just going to accept it. So from that position, I just want to say, look, we're ready to work as we do in the House of Commons here in Ottawa with our job back in our communities over the summer, and should a situation occur that merits investigation, I, I think it would be preposterous for anybody in the Conservative caucus to think that there's some kind of Bloc Québécois NDP cabal. We've been accused of a lot of things. I don't know that we've ever been accused of that. So if you can't find a willing partner in either of the other opposition parties, then you're on your own. Pure and simple. I, I, you know, the stuff that, that I see online and I hear about it in my own committee in, in ethics, the vitriol and abuse and the, the you know, I, fortunately for me, I mean, I'm from Hamilton, so we're, we got thick skin. But I'll tell you, if for the people that are watching, if you have any other illusions that, you know, committees somehow are, are, ought to operate as though the conservatives have a majority, that's not the case right now. I can't tell the future, but I can tell you right now, that's not the case. So I'm here to put the Conservative Caucus on notice that if they want to, if, if, if consider it a notice of motion or a dilatory motion, Mr. Chair, have the chuckle. Um, but I promise you this, if you guys want to use your powers arbitrarily to call meetings without uh, consulting with any of the other parties, it's going to get adjourned. It's going to get adjourned because we can count. We can count the votes in the room. And this is still a, ma a minority situation. So that's why I came in here fired up today. Kelly, I got a lot of respect for you, my friend. And I know that you just take, I just, I, I know that you take, um, I know that you take your orders from the leadership like the rest of your caucus. I get it. Point of order. But Point at of the order, end of the day. Chair. Point of order. Yeah. Mr. Jonas? Yeah. The, the, the member is now uh, disparaging uh, the chair and his. Not role, at all. I just said I have respect for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, let the answer but, show but, I have respect yeah, for him. Yeah, let, let the answer General show that you, you said, you said, I have respect for you and you don't fulfill the functions of chair the chair properly you take orders from somewhere else that is well, that is that is not, that's respect. not a point of order it's, that is uh, no no, no it, is, it is a point of order the, stand, <laughs> the standing <laughs> orders have established rules around around uh, decorum uh, and and, uh, and 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 that's a violation of that decorum Kelly, i apologize that's fine can you continue, continue? yeah i know that, uh, that after me it's going to be your guys yeah. so i'm going to get everything oh, sorry madame point of order If we were seven or eight uh, francophones around the table all talking together uh, simultaneously and uh, two anglophones uh, because nobody could understand what was going on, this would never fly. And this is what I've been putting up with for the last 15 minutes. So please, I have the, have, have, have the uh, courtesy of 
putting up your hand if you're going to intervene and uh, quit cutting in. It'll be a lot easier for you and it'll be a lot easier for us and for anybody who may be listening or who are witnesses or audience here in the room. Thank you. My apologies. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do have a, a question while I have the floor about our resources. How long do we have resources for? 6.30. Till 6.30? Okay. Um, I'm going to say at this, at this moment I'm going to move to suspend this meeting. Thank you. Why? It's not a motion. Mr. Janos, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I, I did want to start by making a comment with respect to the rules of committees and how committees abide by the rules. And uh, uh, Mr. Green and I actually first met at a, uh, at a debate hosted by the Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto. Uh, so uh, I think he'll, he'll, uh, he'll appreciate, uh, if he did sufficient prep for that debate, uh, reading uh, this section from the great play A Man for All Seasons about St. Thomas More, uh, in which William Roper, uh, Thomas More's uh, rather eccentric son-in-law, uh, says... Uh, to the future saint. So now you give the devil the benefit of the of law. To which Thomas More replies, "Yes. Uh, what would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil?" To which Roper replies, "Yes, I'd cut down every law in England to do that." To which More famously replies, "Oh, and when the last law was down and the devil turned around on you, where would you hide, Roper? The laws all being flat." This country is planted thick with laws from coast to coast, man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow? Yes, I give the devil benefit of law for my own safety's sake. Uh, an important reflection, I hope, for members as they consider whether or not it is wise and judicious to show shameless disregard for the long-established rules of parliamentary committees simply in order to achieve the objectives that they want. Uh, members who think that uh, overruling those rules through constant challenges to the chair uh, is going to be in their long-term interests are fooling themselves. They should understand that adherence to the rules, uh, be they uh, certainly man's rules and not God's, uh, to, to quote the play, uh, nonetheless uh, is what preserves us in our roles as members of parliament and our ability to fulfill our functions. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, where are we right now? We have Minister Anand, who uh, I don't always agree with, but I certainly appreciate being able to ask questions to, a, a very uh, very busy minister, as all ministers are, who has come before this committee to answer questions for merely one hour, uh, and uh, I would have hoped we would have had the opportunity uh, to ask questions about the work she is doing as Minister of the Treasury Board. Uh, and instead of allowing those questions to proceed, we have a member of the NDP who who, who is on a crusade to get parliamentary committees to work as little as possible. Uh, if, if anyone wants to know, what, what are the animating causes uh, that, uh, that Mr. Green is excited Sorry, about? Sorry, Mr. Uh, Janus, let me interrupt for Sorry, a second, I'll, I'll sit please. back. Mr. Kuzmerchuk. If I can just ask him to lower his voice and volume and, and step away from the uh, microphone. We just don't, we want to look after our uh, I, interpreters I, and translators. Yeah, Thank I you. appreciate that, Mr. Kuzmerchuk, but I said before, if there is an issue, whether it's too close, too loud, microphone too cl or earpiece too close, the translators will let the clerk know and then we will interrupt. We just don't want to repeat, Mr. Chair, what happened yeah. in the House, so we're very that sensitive. That was a completely that. different situation, but I appreciate that, Mr. Kuzmerchuk. Go ahead, Mr. Genuas. Uh, thank you, Chair, and if there were any problems with the sound, I'm happy to start from the top. Uh, is there any... Oh, is the Okay. Uh, I have I have assurance from my francophone colleague here that it's not necessary for me to start from the top. So I'll so I'll continue. If if the people of Hamilton would like to know, uh, what are the animating causes uh, for Mr. Green? What are the things that he gets up in the morning thinking about when he when he decides which issues to prioritize? I know some members come to Parliament and they think they want to focus on uh, economic issues. Some members come to Parliament and they want to focus on social programs. Some members come to Parliament wanting to focus on, uh, on foreign policy issues. Mr. Green comes to Parliament and he thinks, how can I create a situation in which members of Parliament have to work less? He is going from committee to committee. This isn't even his regular committee. He's not a regular member of OGO. He is going from committee to committee, moving motions, 
designed to reduce the workload of members of parliament. This is his mission. This is what has this is what has brought him here, Mr. Speaker. He has he has come to parliament in order to reduce the workload of members of parliament. He is he is putting forward motions at committee saying that whatever happens, whatever the circumstances, I'm chairs gonna, cannot sorry, I'm convene interrupt meetings. For a sec. I'm hearing lots of chatter back and forth. Can we please, Mr. Genuis has the floor. Let's just leave it out with him, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. His motions are proposing that whatever happens this summer, whatever the circumstances, that committees cannot be brought back to do, to do their jobs over the summer. I, I can tell you, I think that uh, Canadians would expect something very different. Canadians would like to see members of Parliament working hard through the summer. Yes, going to constituency events, but Rappel also being prepared 